Hello everybody, welcome to, I suppose, an updated review of the board game Diplomacy. Now, a while ago I made a video just talking about strategies, like the openings for every single country, and I think I advertised, uh, I have to go back and look, but I, I believe at one point I advertised some other stuff going on with Diplomacy, but I figured I'd come back and give kind of an update, if you, if you could say that. Um, to to everything, uh, just to uh, kind of go over the game again. Now this is on a smaller map, as you can see, it can get pretty much everybody in one shot. I don't have my tripod anymore, so uh, things might be a little bit shaky, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully things are good. Uh, as you can see on this particular board, we have uh, we have England over here. Uh, we've got France, uh, army unit pieces, the army pieces are represented by these guys, and fleets are represented by those guys, uh, and actually, since I'm left-handed, I might move my light source somewhere else, uh, but anyway, uh, we have Italy, uh, Germany up here, Austria is going to be down here, with Turkey all the way down here at the bottom, and our big boy Russia over there. Now. I wanted to talk about actually how to play the game, because even though I showed off opening strategies, I didn't actually talk about how the game is actually played, um, which is kind of, in hindsight, because I, I got a question asked recently on a comment of how stuff works in the game, and I wanted to go ahead and make a video kind of talking about that. Uh, plus, I'll be using the new pieces, or I guess newer pieces. Um, they're all, all metal. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's a great addition. Uh, of the game from Avalon Hill. Uh, so, Diplomacy starts off, uh, in actuality, not really on the board. I mean, you look at it, sure, you got starting places, but the game should be giving you a map that looks something like this. Uh, this map should be consistent, no matter what version of uh, of the game you get, because as you can see, there's, uh, there's England, for example. You have, uh, you know, France over here. You can see moving up here to Germany. Uh, Russia having this big wide scape, Turkey being down here, Austria and Italy in the middle. Now, uh, when you're playing the game, if you have less than um, if you have less than seven players, uh, for a six-player game, you remove Italy. Don't don't play with them. They're not a, they're not around anymore. Uh, instead, uh, and if there's less than if you get down to five players then uh, one person is controlling uh, Germany and Austria. Uh, if another, I mean, and so forth and so forth. You make teams as you go, if the less players you have, but uh, all players are kind of put into the game, sort of, as you, as you go through it. But we're going to pretend for this example that we have all seven players. So if you're watching this with less than seven players, just pick extra countries to control, essentially, for people who might be less skilled. Um, however, each country will still win individually, just just to be clear. Um, and the, to win, all you need to do uh, is to control 18 of these starred uh, supply centers. Uh, so, for example, you could take... It's about half the board. Uh, there's 32 on the whole map, so you need to take over about half the board. It's a pretty long game. So I have some recommendations, too, before we get into the rules itself, on how to actually go about playing the game. Uh, the first step, is, to be honest, is just going to be uh, the way we time manage uh, each turn being taken. So the first step of the game is actually to take a look at your army. You, you see what you have. Like, let's say uh, I am Italy, all right, because people barely talk about Italy, and it's worth talking about them because uh, they're a pretty tough faction. Um, say we're Italy and we're like, okay, um, so I have a fleet in, uh, in Naples here, uh, we have, you know, an uh, army in Rome and Venice, and, uh, you know, we have Austria, France, and technically Turkey is gonna be a, a major threat, although immediately we're worried about Austria and France. So, uh, what do we do? Well, we, we take a look at 
who are neighbors, and we say, hey, we talk to the player who's France, and we say, hey, I want to I want to make you do moves that favor me, and we talk to Austria and say, hey, I want to make you do the moves that favor me, and then they'll be saying the same thing back to us. So you talk in this phase uh, for about, uh, the first phase is supposed to be half an hour, then every subsequent phase of talking is meant to be 10 minutes, uh, 10 to 15 minutes, I believe. Uh, however, for your preferences, you might want to speed it up or slow down how much time you need to talk, depending on your skill level uh, of the players around. Because again, if you do have a seven player game, odds are not everyone is going to be have the same amount of experience with the game itself. Um, as well as the fact that because it's such a long game, I highly recommend you use a timer. So that way you make sure that the game does get moving. Because if you allow, for example, the conversation part is the longest part of the game. The actual, the rest of the game is actually fairly short. If you played a full game of Diplomacy with no talking, for example, that's called Gunboat Diplomacy. Or at least, the if you play like a normal board game, essentially, where everyone's sitting around the table. Uh, it should only take you about maybe an hour to two hours at most, I think. In terms of strategy, planning, still talking on the board, but because there's no secret running around you don't have to try and track people down and and such uh also we are this is 2020 now so we live in the modern era and uh we do have uh, cell phones so if you want to you could do uh every, where everyone sits around the table and then texts each other negotiations throughout the entire game as you just go through playing it like a normal board game so that is another option as well just just to keep in mind although everyone does need to have a cell phone uh, in order to do that which shouldn't be too hard nowadays but you never know not everyone has a cell phone um, so you talk, uh, and then you go to the order writing phase. And I have some example orders here. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to grab them. I'm going to try and find my orders, actually, from a previous game I did. Um, so give me, give me a second here. Let's see. Are these my orders? Uh, no, but I did find in my, right here, as we're looking at it, I'll just lay it down. Some order format examples that was written down by someone, not me. But I think my dad wrote these down. They're very helpful. So here's some order format examples for attacking, supporting, and convoying. So uh, there's some abbreviations. What you do when you make an abbreviation, in this example, I'll even show it on the board. I'm not just going to show you these letters and stuff, but it would be helpful to see. So now that you've got, gotten a good look at that, we're going to see what those orders actually meant. So um, let's see. There was Budapest. Let's, ah, right. For Austria, for example, uh, the, an attack order would be something like Army A to in Budapest B U D Bud to uh, S E R Serbia, and then that's declaring that that uh, this army here is moving to there. So that's how we think about an attack order. Or uh, another example would be a fleet move. Uh, would be for um, if there was a fleet, for example, in the North Sea by England, and it wanted to go to. Um, for example, the uh, English Channel, you'd write uh, F, uh, NTH, or North, and whatever, however you want to abbreviate North, um, and then you'd say a dash to ENG, English Channel, so then the boat would come down to the English Channel. That'd be an example of a fleet move. And now let's take a look at a support. So support, for example, if we come back down here to Austria, kind of showing off a lot of the world. Uh, for example, if we had um, this army that's in Budapest um, is going to also be, um, no, like this. So uh, the way we'd write a support order and the way we denote it as well, when we're going through the orders, I like to lay down the piece if it's a supporting unit and the and you point it into the area that it is supporting into. So not the area, the unit that's getting supported, the area it's supporting into. So the army of Budapest is going to support the Russian army of Romania. You don't need to declare this Russian though, you just say the territory, because only one unit can occupy a space at a time. So we'd say the army in Budapest is supporting the Russian army into, or the army in R of Romania into Serbia. So that'd be an example of a yeah, supporting move. Uh, another example of a good supporting move, although it's not written down in those examples I showed off, would be, uh, and this is a classic, classic example, is uh, something like this in the game, where um, because there, every unit in the game is a value of one, uh, normally if we had an army attacking down here, and then this Turkish army were to attack down here, 
they'd be of equal strength, so then they'd go back to where they came from. Not very exciting. However, uh, if the Austrian player wrote that this fleet was going to support this move, and then this guy came in, then it's a two to one strength. So uh, the orders will be written as uh, in any order you want to, by the way. Uh, you just have to write them completely in, in, a sing in each in, a, in their own line. You'd say Army Serbia to Greece. And then you'd say, Fleet Albania supports Serbia to Greece. You don't need to say it's an army. You just say, supports Serbia to Greece, for example. So then that'd be a two to one strength. Uh, the order of army Bulgaria to Greece would not work, and they'd go back. And then the board would end up looking like that. That's how, how it would look, essentially. So let's also talk about convoys. Uh, I'll show off the most famous convoy probably in the whole game, um, but it is a good one to know. Uh, let me get more pieces. Just to show off the full extent of of how, uh, how powerful this is. Um, okay, so let's say we're here, and you guys saw the, uh, the convoys before. So you can do simple convoys. For example, if you had a fleet here in the Norwegian Sea, and then we have... Uh, an army in Edinburgh, you could say um, the fleet in the Norwegian Sea, F Nor, convoy C, and then you say army A, uh, so A Edinburgh, E E um, E D I, I believe, yeah, E D I, um, to uh, St. Petersburg, or no, uh, Norway, for example, Norway. And at the same time, so that's the fleet's order, the army would just be ordered to move Edinburgh to Norway. So it'd be E-D-I-N-O-R, right? That should be a pretty, that should be pretty straightforward, or I think it's N-O-W technically for Norway. Um, but a more complicated way to do it is you can have more than one fleet giving a convoy to a single unit, and that's important to note. So, uh, army Tunis, T-U-N, Tun, moves to Syria. So that'd be S-Y-R, Syria. But the fleets would have to make the order Fleet Ionian, Convoy Army Tunis to Syria. And this fleet would also need to say uh, Fleet Eastern Med, Convoy Tunis to Syria. Okay? And now we also have to talk about cutting support, so, uh, or cutting a convoy. There's two ways to cut things, um, which is, is really important to understand. So let's say in here, um, we're Italy and we're backstabbing bastards and we've gone ahead and done uh, this kind of play right here. And uh, the board's looking somewhat like this, right? So uh, for example, if this army was going to make a support move, so this army is going to support the army in Venice into Trieste, right? We learned how that works. This army here is trying to bounce Trieste, but we know there's a two to one strength. So right now, Italy would definitely be uh, taking over, right? The, Italy would have this spot. But if Germany decided to say, make an attack move on Munich, from Munich into Tyrolia, this one attacks the support. Whenever an army is attacking another, uh, a supporting army, its support is no longer allowed because they must defend themselves. Because all movement in the game is simultaneous. Even if orders are written off one at a time, they're all simultaneous. So that would mean that this supporting army is cut. So that means that can no longer be supporting because they have to turn and, and defend. And these two would bounce off each other. Then these two would bounce off each other because, again, there's no support and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So you can see that it's hard to make progress sometimes if you don't have your supports figured out. On a similar note, if Turkey had a fleet here in the Aegean Sea, and this fleet was giving a convoy uh, of the Tunisian unit into Syria, but the Aegean Sea made an attack on this convoy, the convoy can no longer convoy. It's cut. It, it's stuck. So that means this unit never moves. And this unit does nothing. So that's something also to keep in mind. Now, if there was support, if, uh, say, say we were just convoying to Greece, right? Say we just wanted to move this unit 
over to Greece. Well, uh, and this unit was here giving the convoy. Uh, sometimes people lay it down if they're showing convoy, although I like to lay it down just for support. The support you'd push in. So perhaps, yeah, if you to make it easier, lay down your pieces um, to denote convoy. Um, and then if this one makes an attack, but this one gives support, not an attack, importantly, you need to support this uh, unit here in the Ionian, giving it a strength of two, which is higher than the strength of one. So then this one gets bounced out. This supporting unit goes uh, goes back here. And then what would happen is this unit is able to still head over here, so long as this unit didn't make an attack into Greece. Because if this unit attacks Greece, then it's one to one strength, because there's no support, and then boom. So that, that's how that could play out. The, the, I'm, I'm just kind of showing you the basics of how to play. So you write your orders down, and I'm gonna I'm still gonna try and find you guys some orders here that you can take a look at. Um, let's see, there should be a fair amount. I think ooh, there's a lot of blank paper. That's not necessarily what I wanted to see, though. Uh, ah, here's uh, someone's orders from a previous game. Okay, previous game, Austria. Perfect. So uh, in the spring, the, you, the way you write orders for a country itself is you note the year and you note the country at the top of your piece of paper, and then you say what you're going to do. So in a standard Austrian setup, this is perfect. We're right here with Austria. Let me just uh, reset up the board a bit so that way you guys can see exactly what's going on here. So, let's take a look at these orders um, in the spring. So, Army of Budapest to Serbia. So, that's the move that's being attempted. These are all attempted moves when you do these orders. And then you have the fleet in Trieste, this one, to go to the Adriatic Sea. Now, what's interesting is that this is a far weaker move because you're not going to get Greece this way. Uh, this is an anti-Italy attack. And then this one, Army Vetus to um, Tyrolia. Oh, this is, an, uh, this is a horrible... I don't like these moves at all. This just completely leaves Italy open to an attack. So I wouldn't do that. But in the winter, uh, I don't know what uh, Italy did, but uh, we'll, we'll just try and move on. Right? I'm just trying to show an example game, kind of. Um, for example, in this one it says Army in Tyrolia moves to Venice. Yeah, so this army must have moved into Trieste. So this army moves into Venice, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, and then fleet in the Adriatic supports the Trieste to Venice, okay. So this fleet in the um, Adriatic is supporting the move of of there to there, okay, fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, let's see here. The army in Serbia will hold. So that's an example of some uh, of some moves that might be going on. Obviously, I don't know quite what was going on. It, it's possible that this unit was over here in Piedmont dealing with the French. So, you know, this is sometimes a thing. Hard to say from only one order sheet, but I can kind of guess um, that. Oh, this actually also might have been a game where there was no Italy and things were just getting booted off the board. Um, but yeah, so there's some examples of kind of how, how play would go, uh, which is pretty interesting. And as you can see, there's obviously lots of uh, orders that are given. And uh, you can kind of see how uh, the game would progress. So you write orders down, you conduct, you, you move, you, you carry out the orders, you resolve any conflicts, then we take a look to see how many units you would get. For example, uh, it, let's pretend this is the end of the fall phase, right? We actually went through the the, fall, the winter. Or some people right, say it as the winter phase. Technically, uh, winter is your build phase. Um, so it'd be fall. So at the end of the fall phase, uh, your board looks like this. If you're Austria, that means you can get two units. So what you might say, get an army in Budapest. Very good move. And uh, because they're Austria, they might also say they want an army in Trieste. That's perfectly reasonable. However, because uh, there aren't supply centers on the coast, and it's important to note that every faction has a coastal uh, province, they might stay, instead want a fleet. That is an option. Uh, although Austria should get armies. Just minor tip. Um, so then you'd build. Uh, if you, however, had less, let's say, for example, Turkey here is being completely crushed, and they have... 
they have three armies here, but uh oh, a Russian army got into uh, into there. Then at the end of the phase, they might lose a unit, so that could be bad. So you can be eliminated from the game. Um, most of the time, if you play the game with a timer, it's not too bad getting eliminated. Um, the first, I'd say maybe five turns are the most fun of the game. Uh, there, there are points where you can see clear winners and losers. Uh, and that's not too hard to get to, so that's why people spend a lot of time talking in the early phases to try and give themselves as much of an advantage as possible to help win. Uh, and essentially you keep doing this process over and over, and, and you have to write down your builds too, uh, by the way. So, for example, uh, build, build army in, uh, for example, Vienna, and then uh, also build an army in Budapest. So this player, upon doing, if we look back, this, built an army here, and also built an army in Vienna. So those were the two builds. Perfectly reasonable. Um, so you build, you build, you just go through the whole game. I mean, that's it. I mean, that that's essentially all the rules. Some people make it seem like, oh, the rules are going to take forever or something. Uh, it's not. And once you learn it, it's very straightforward to figure out. Um, importantly, just re always remember that uh, everything has one strength, and there's no everything simultaneous. Also, it's really important. So there's no. The order you read your orders in doesn't give you priority or anything. It's all at the same time. Um, oh yeah, and after a, a supporting thing is over, it's also good to make sure to remember to turn over your boats to make sure that you know that they're able to do whatever they want. Um, they're not committed anymore. All right, so that's pretty much the rules of the game, kind of with an updated look, these new pieces. Uh, I hope you guys like them. Um, I might try and do show off some games just to show off what you know, how a game of diplomacy could go. Um, I find diplomacy to be a really fascinating game and just kind of like pol the politics of just like, you know, this is kind of a, some people call this a ruin, ruin your friendship game, but I, I don't think of it like that. I think of it as a, a good example of uh, just fun antics, more or less. So I'm just kind of resetting up for my next video. Um, Anyway guys, thank you all for watching the rules portion of uh, Diplomacy. I hope you like the new map. Um, obviously, if you have any questions about the rules, any comments or concerns, obviously this isn't the complete rule guide in the rulebook. There's obviously exceptions and special rules and um, stuff for certain t areas of, of the map. But uh, you'll find that all in the book when you play the game, because I highly doubt you're playing the game if you don't own the game. Um, and at some point, uh, this is important, uh, I would like to do an online kind of Diplomacy game. I'll be, uh, if people are interested in playing Diplomacy, um, where they would email me uh, their orders, um, I would just say, you know, I'd give them a week to submit orders. It'd be a long process for a single game. Uh, but essentially people would just email me their orders and I'd carry them out and we'd see who wins. And we could like, maybe have a contest, maybe have a small prize or something I could send out. Like, I don't know yet. Uh, but anyway, yeah, just some thoughts. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, as always, I'm El Worfi, and I'll see you guys next time.